Social welfare is not a phrase that one would normally associate with the Republican Party. After all, Republicans have been railing against the concept ever since Ronald Reagan raised the spectre of freeloading welfare queens during his campaign for the White House. But oh, how th times have changed. And instead of attacking welfare, today's Republicans are taking it up as a shield to protect some of their most secretive operations. It's time to play. Who's the biggest supporter of the Obama agenda in Ohio? It's Sherrod Brown. Brown backed Obama's agenda a whopping 95% of the time. That is an attack ad against Senator Sherrod Brown, Democrat of Ohio, that came out today from Karl Rove's, quote, social welfare group, Crossroads GPS. It's part of a multi-million dollar ad buy in other swing states around the country. But Mr. Rove can pass it off as, quote, issue advocacy and raise untold amounts of money from donors whom he'll never have to reveal. And thus, Mr. Rove, in one of the great ironies of modern U.S. politics, continues his plan to purchase American democracy, but of course, always in the name of social welfare. Let's bring back our panel now, David Korn, Eugene Robinson and Julian Epstein. David, here we have what amounts to a vast right-wing conspiracy led by Mr. Rove and the Koch brothers and other wealthy mm -hmm. reactionaries to buy the election, and they're doing it all under the aegis of social welfare. So tell me, should I be laughing or crying? <laughs> It's a, new type, it's, a new, it's a new type of socialism. I mean, this is a dodge that's been on the books for a long time. And to be honest, groups on the left, liberal groups, environmental groups, and others do the same thing. What, what the law says is if you're a social welfare organization, you, you know, politics can be sort of a, a percentage of your operation, but you have to basically exist to advance the social welfare. The description is very vague and wide. Having a debate over immigration, over energy policy, would advance the social welfare no matter what side of the debate you're on. But what Carl Rove and others have done now is to take this idea of these nonprofits and make them basically just political, just oriented to campaigns. They can't tell you to vote for or against a particular candidate, but they can say, send a letter to Barack Obama and tell him to get lost because we don't <laughs> like him. Whatever reason. Well, and, and, so, and so they do this, and the, and the key thing here is, you know, is that they're, because they do this, they're not like a pack. They don't have to disclose the billionaires and billionaires who are venting by giving them millions of dollars for their ads, so you never know who's behind these attack ads. That's the real problem here. We have this, you know, we have this dark money that's trying to sort of swipe the democ our democracy. Indeed. Julian, you wanted to butt in. No, I was just going to say exactly what David said. The whole purpose <laughs> of this is to avoid disclosure. You know, David Axelrod said this is the most secretive candidate and the most secretive candidate campaign since Richard Nixon, and it gives you an idea of the kind of government you'll get if Mitt Romney's elected, one that's run by special interests and you never have any idea who the Republican Party owes this big fat IOU to. You know, it took Chief Justice John Roberts to explain to conservatives and Republicans the difference between a direct tax and a tax penalty in the context of the uh, health care case. Now the conservatives don't seem to understand the difference between an issue-oriented PAC uh, or, or a PAC uh, expenditure and a social welfare philanthropic organization, which, as David said, is pri should be primarily geared, the latter should be primarily geared to issue advocacy and should not be a political organization. This is all about Republicans thinking that the public does not have a right to know to whom the Republican Party owes a big, fat IOU to. It's amazing. Eugene, we just saw a commercial targeting Senator Sherrod Brown, as I said, Democrat of Ohio. It's part of a $10 billion conservative ad blitz in that state. On the other side, liberal groups have spent around $2 million. How on earth is Mr. Brown supposed to compete when he's being outspent two to one by people he knows nothing about? He knows, doesn't know who they are? Well, Martin, don't, don't you realize that, that anonymous right-wing billionaires are people, too? Oh, we should sorry. be concerned about their welfare. Sorry, I <laughs> forgot. You know, Thank it, you. It, it, it's, seriously, it, it, you know, on, on the presidential level, the Obama campaign is going to have a lot of money. It might not have as much money, but Obama and his allies will have tons of money. And, and frankly, I think we could reach some sort of saturation point uh, in, the, in the presidential campaign where there's just no more airtime. So both sides will get their message out. But down ticket um, for someone like Sherrod Brown, for, for house races around the country, this sort of, of huge money piling in can make all the difference. And 
that's where I think uh, there could really be a substantial impact. Indeed. It's, it's, it's particularly towards the end of the campaign, Martin, because you can have these groups come in in the last week or two right. of a campaign and go up against a House, a House or Senate candidate with a million or two million dollars, and that's real money for those sort of races, Absolutely. and just blow them out of the water and not give them a chance to respond. And what's going to happen? Maybe there'll be an angry letter to the Times about this, but Carl Rove will be laughing all the way to the majority in the Senate and preserving the majority in the House for the Republicans. Well, th and this is about the corruption of democracy. I mean, I think Obama is going to be fine on the money at the end of the game, because I think we will hit a saturation point, and I think he's got a better game on the ground right now. But you picture a legislative situation where a major vote is coming up on, say, regulation of the oil industry. Oh. And you can have the oil industry that can come into any number of, uh, of, of districts where there are swing mm -hmm. votes and say, if you vote against me, I will run $2 million of negative ads against you. The potential for totally corrupting the democracy and turning this into a plutocracy because of this lack of accountability uh, in this uh, Citizens United era is just astounding. See, I mean, that's I, I a think key it, point, because it's not just about getting people to vote your way in, returns f in return for a campaign donation. A lot of times it's scaring the hell of people so you don't become a target of this dark money. A lot yes. of people in swing states, in, in tough districts, don't want to become targets, and they know what will make them a target. David Corn, exactly right. Eugene Robinson, and Julian Epstein saying it like it is. Thank you, gentlemen.